hour and then I um I work and get me up to I just talk to you and then I target the chain target you want and then I target Wednesday afternoons when I drop this, if I don't have one right now, that's just like, I can't be picky anymore. Then it's, you gotta find one. Yeah. Maybe it's not the idea. Well, it's not the idea. Somebody logged in. Cool. Right. Well, I thought that was me. Did you just hear You're here. Ding ding. Really, have, I'm always, I've always been one where my personality, I guess, I look at over plan. Right now, I don't know. 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 I am sure everyone, you can get going to do it. Like, oh, Is this a lot of or too much, I just it's that far yeah. back TV. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Should we say which one? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Open up the door. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I know. I'm like, yeah, like, ah. That's exactly right. You know what I mean? I'm already talking about here on Open Castle Rock. There's no knock signs? Nope. I'm not going to knock on that door. Yeah. And they were every day. Yeah, Castle Rock is really intense on that. All right, we have an appointment at 12.30, and it is 12.30, so let's get started. Um, let's go ahead, and what we're going to do is we'll do an intro, and then I'll bring a few gentlemen up, and we'll, we'll have a chance for conversation. Um, let's also, Anna, just so that you're not sitting all alone over there, come on over, um, and let's, let's combine these tables here and get everything kind of going and keep that energy going. So who was here last time when we talked about... Wealth building. Couple, right. Was the profit one? Yeah, exactly. So what were some ahas that you had um, here from the wealth building class the first time we did it? Um, building profit. What did we talk about? Investment properties, mm -hmm. fixed flips. Right. Um, just kind of along those lines, how you build your profit, you have to pay yourself first. And then everything else. Right. Besides some money for yourself or something like that. It was, the, or. Yeah, it was the food. It was the food thing. What was the food thing, Andrea? So use small plates. Uh huh. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have the notes right now. Small small portions. Uh, Absolutely. Serve sequentially. I feel like I didn't write down what the rest of the primary is. Primary in separate bank accounts and then four so really set. You can sit, yeah, if you guys want to move over to this side, absolutely. Like <laughs> Robin, if you want to grab a chair yeah. in here too. So one of the things we talked about, and you're absolutely right, Andrea, is we went and talked about profit first. And within profit first, I was uh, could have put my own foot in my mouth on that one on talking what we were chat about is <laughs> room full of women and I'm talking about diets. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this could go turn so fast here. <laughs> so, um, but one of the things we talked about was a, the four core principles of profit first. Using small plates. Using smaller plates starts a chain reaction. Use a small plate, you get smaller portions, which means you take in fewer calories. Think of this from a business standpoint with all of this. Serve sequentially. If you eat vegetables, rich in nutrients and vitamins first, they'll start satisfying your hunger. Removing temptations. Re remove any temptation from where you eat. People are driven by convenience. If you're anything like me, then there's a bag of Doritos sitting in the kitchen. It falls out to you constantly, even when you aren't hungry. And number four is enforcing a rhythm. So what we did is, and the, the important piece on, on the rhythm was if you, wait to, if you wait until you're hungry to eat, it's already too late and you will binge, right? because it's your body is craving it and it's already started eating the muscle, not the fat. So when we look at that with business, we tied in why um, each one of these can be relevant from going profit first. So 
for those who don't know and that haven't read this book, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome book. It's on Gary's shelf. Um, it's called Profit First. Uh, I'm, I have the hard copy, and then I'm also listening to it on audio. It's very, very good. And that was just tying the first chapter. So when we look at this and we talk about building a profitable business. So the key pieces on building a profitable business and what we're going to talk about here in a little bit is being able to monitor where your business is at at any time which is absolutely paramount because then you know, can I cut back on the 20% expenses? What does my revenue start looking like? How does, the, how does my profit tie into next year's goals? Are we taking money out for taxes? That was a huge conversation that we had last time. That's, that is ginormous. That's a number one way that real estate agents get into massive trouble. Is we make $300,000 and we don't pay Uncle Sam. Guess what? He's coming after the money regardless. So it's our choice is we can wear this type of outfit or an orange suit. I'd prefer to wear this, <laughs> even though you get three meals a day. So, um, so we'll talk about that. The other piece that ties in, and I think this is really important to have a clear understanding of this, is going to be the four models of real estate. And so model number one, who actually, who knows the four models of real estate? You look at the millionaire real estate agent. Sure, absolutely. Yep. Budget. Budget. One more. Organization. Yes, sir. So good job, guys. So if you look at the economic model, is the first model. Followed by that is going to be the lead generation model. Followed by that is budget, and then organizational model. Why do you think these models all talk to each other? Let's start with this. What defines the economic model? So one of the things that defines the economic model is your business plan. It's knowing which your business plan is the form model you buy. So it's knowing that what numbers you must hit. So economic is going to be our numbers that we must hit. It's also going to be focusing on appointments, right? That's going to be our activities. And then focusing on conversion. Why do you think it's important to focus on our numbers that we must hit, followed by appointments and conversion before we move on to lead gen? So you know the results that you have to hit. Right. You your goals. Right. Is every business different? Yeah, absolutely. Even top producers' businesses, there are similarities and there's parallels between the businesses of top producers, and each business may be a little bit different. It could be their target market, their price point, where they're located. Are they an individual agent? Are they a team? Are they a partnership? What does that look like? We know within real estate, there's many different avenues and layers to where we can run this business at a high level. The key behind it is going to be what models and systems are backing you up. So if we look at lead gen, so that's econ. What's what's our lead gen? What would what would be some characteristics of the lead gen model? What? The activities that you take to kind of get those appointments slash conversions or so. Yeah. So in fact, it goes down here, right? So the activities, which you're right on point with. Part of it is you'll need to prospect and market. So going into those activities, who are we prospecting to? What markets are we focused in on? Is there a target market? Is it a blanket? What specifically are we doing, right? Another key piece around this, on the lead gen model especially, data bank. Do you look at your database as a data bank? It's really what it is. 
Now here's the key around this. The data bank is going to be also around systems, right? What's our CRM? How many touches are we doing? Are we using command or something different? Do we have a model and system we can replicate? Key pieces of success, it shouldn't matter where, whether in Denver or if you picked up the business right now and moved to Milwaukee. Because of the model and <coughs> systems, you can replicate your business. That's some of the challenge if we have a reactive business that doesn't have a model and a system. It's almost impossible to replicate. That's where agents sometimes run into challenges when we're relocating, right? So, um, Focus on seller listings taken is the other one. We talked about this in the team meeting. Is there anything wrong with buyer listings taken? No. Is there anything wrong with working with buyers? No. no. Heck no. Not at all. It all depends on how you're structuring your business and systematically how much time you're going to invest in your business on a weekly and daily basis. That's the premise. But there's nothing at all, and I, I want to make sure I make that clear because I know we talk about listings a lot. There's a reason for that. And buyers are absolutely, here's what we know is going to, <coughs> what we're starting to see happen right now. We're starting to see inventory continue to climb. There's more expired listings that are hitting the market. There's more price drops are hitting the market. So buyers who before were having to go, what, make one, 20 offers on a property, right? Wasn't that... 18 months ago, not even, 12 months ago. Now we're starting to increase in inventory, which is your supply. Because your supply is going up, the buyers now comes a crucial conversation around how many properties are they, what's their expectation of us? How many properties do they expect us to show? 10 years ago in the recession, we had a quote unquote rule on the team. If I was working with a buyer directly, he has five properties. That was maximum. That was when there was REOs, short sales, all of that. So did I have to get really good at my buyer consultation? Yeah. And the other piece around it is I had to know the reason why. I, they had to know the reason why we were doing five properties. Statistically, a buyer that sees 10 or more properties starts to create their own home. They pull the deck from here, they pull the three car garage from here, they pull a lot from there, right? Line of dying, and they create their own home. Which causes confusion, right? Causes confusion, and then now they're back on the fence again instead of making an offer. Now everyone's business is different, and I'm not saying show five properties and that's it. That's what worked for us. And that's the reason why we did that. So if we look at the budget model, what are some key characteristics about the budget model? The P&L? Yeah, what, 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 is a, what is a characteristic around the P&L? It's a profit and loss statement, right? Why is a P&L important? How you're doing. Sure, financial, it's a financial thermostat, right? So tying into that, and you're right, Richard, is going to be leading with revenue. So the P&L lets us know can, what, what can we do to cut back on, where are we at, how are we leading with profit. Our industry is focused on volume. It really is. Um, my goal this year is 25 units. My goal this year is 36 units. Right? Volume, volume, volume. What would this look like when we flip the script on that and make our business focus on profit, not necessarily volume? Because profit can tell you, maybe I don't need that volume and I adjust my purchase price. Or I, I adjust my target market, right? You may not have to do four sales in Highlands Ranch and pick up one in backcountry on the other side over here. Right? I mean, just being real. So it's all on how we're doing the business, but leading with revenue, and a key characteristic of leading with revenue is red light, green light. Who understands what red light, green light means? Oh, it's tough. What? Yeah, Robin, <laughs> that's absolutely right. Why is it important to understand that? Where to go when it's not? Well, um, it's 
you're spending too much, you have to adjust that. You know, you can't leave with revenue. Yeah. Right. And the key around that is that PNL to know where are we at, right? Where's our where's our thermostat at? So now on the fourth model here, what do you what would you believe defines an organizational model? The roles that need to be fulfilled. Yeah, right. Absolutely, Mark. So the roles, right? What else? What positions you need to fill. Sure. Yep. So roles and positions, right? What else? What's another defining characteristic? The systems? Is this where systems goes? Systems to a point. But really, once the systems are back here, right? Oh, yeah. As we work our way through, this is how each of the models talk to each other. It's it's it ties into what we do. Train and consult. My handwriting's a little bit. Yeah. I was thinking like organizational systems. Right. And you're right about that because what does you know what is our what's our role and our expectation for an admin for an executive assistant for a transaction coordinator? Once we have those pieces, which a lot of times as we're growing teams, we feel that we want the first thing we do is go to get a buyer's agent. Very first. Here's the challenge, completely with that. If we go jump directly to the buyer's agent don't have a TC, we don't have an admin who specialize in models and systems. Now we are the ones who are supposed to specialize in models and systems. I can tell you from my perspective as an agent, you don't want me doing your models and systems. Do I know them? Absolutely. That's why I've Amber, right? That's her strength. She rocks that. That's the same thing when we look at a team, right? I want to know does my admin have a CRM up and running? Does my, what, what is my time investment? And what's my time investment for each transaction? It's gonna vary a little bit, but if I don't have a TC, I'm now taking that TC role, right? So the key around that is, is being able to roles and positions, you're right about having the model, the, that clarity around that, and really it's a training consult. And, Are we hiring talent or are we just being reactive and hiring the first person that comes our way? <coughs> that could go for every level of the team. The key piece around talent and when you're hiring and there's nothing at all, nothing at all wrong with hiring a showing assistant after you have your admin, please. Hiring a showing assistant or a buyer agent to help leverage the buyer so you can focus on the listings. Now, flip the script a little bit, they're brand new then they're building their business, right? So we're coaching and then we're training them on it and we're molding them on how to build that business within the real estate community. If they're seasoned, then we're actually being strategic here because the talent and the data bank go hand in hand. So if I bring on a seasoned agent that does on average, let's say two deals a month, right? Something along those lines. They also have a database, right? They have past clients, they have things going on. As the team lead, I'm absorbing that database. So now it's actually a strategy with some of the top teams that are out there right now is they'll go and bring on seasoned agents because that's what they're doing. They're, they're exponentially increasing their database overnight. And like I said in the very beginning, all of this changes it could be because real estate can be done so many different ways. The absolute key behind this is models and systems and knowing where you're at. So any question, concerns, anything around that? Now you guys all got me at the end of a team meeting where I was on fire. So <laughs> <laughs> I was just warming up. Um, and so the key piece here is being able to identify on here. And the reason why I brought, um, which thank you very much to both Bud and Mark on 
sitting with us today and being able to share this is because both of these gentlemen, one, have successful businesses, two, are able to monitor their expenses, um, whether it's through the PL, through profit margins. And I thought it would be really helpful and just such a compliment to be these two gentlemen to be able to share that with us. And the key around this is, is engagement. So really think about questions that you have. Think about, you know, what, what would you like to gain out of this? And then let's be hyper engaged so that we're, it's live conversation. So it's not, yes, we're going to talk about the story, yet it's not just about that. It's about being able to take something along the way from it. So with that, let's put our hands together and bring Bud and Mark up to the front. I figured we'll just rock and roll. And really, what this is is a live conversation. So, um, you know, I know, let's start with your story because both of you have very compelling stories on how many years you've been in the business, how you got started, and then we'll tie that in with um, the financial downsides. So, who would like to go first? Big rock scissors. <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you for taking time. I know how busy everybody is. So, uh, uh, but yeah, my name is Bud Doyle, and uh, I've been licensed for almost six years, I think or so. I was on a team for about the first eight months. Um, I was turning 50 uh, about the time that this was happening. And I was like, I think I can do this, you know? And so I, uh, I branched out and kind of started Bud's home team. Um, you're looking at it. So Bud's home team, I'm receivable. No. Uh, but uh, I decided at that point, you know, and, and you know, I was part of the Corrigan group. It was very thankful for the things I learned there. But I felt like I was going to bet on myself and, and start. And so I just decided, you know, two things. One is what can I do that makes me different? You know, there's 32,000 or whatever the number of agents is or so. And then number two is what is going to be my lead gen lever to generate business or so. And, you know, and so I just decided, um, I'll answer the second question first, that I kind of, I, I'm sort of a social guy. I enjoy the interaction of meeting people at open houses. So I decided I would kind of be open house guy. So I think that's kind of the reputation I have in offices. I'm open house, which I'm fine with that. Um, but I just, um, one thing I learned early on, it might've been Gary or at, at one of the family reunions or mega camps, it's not what you make in real estate, it's what you keep. And so that has basically guided me literally from day one um, to today. And the thing that I love, so basically open houses, and then I've added in door knocking as a second layer or so, because sometimes, as all of us know, if you do an open house and you're out there on Saturday and you only get two groups through, it's hard to pay the bills. Um, you know, it's like, where are all the people? So I've kind of added door knocking. My goal is to get to 75 contacts a week. So that's what I stick to. Um, so that's kind of, you know, and, and that, I mean, I, you know, I do about an average about 100 open houses a year. Um, and uh, uh, once again, my, my cost of sale is very, very low because it doesn't cost me a dime. My signs are already paid for. It doesn't cost me a dime to go out and do an open house. And it also doesn't cost me a dime to get out of my car and knock on a neighborhood and for two and a half hours or two hours or so on a given Wednesday. Um, so, um, and then the second thing that I decided to do is in an effort to be different is I kind of, you know, I, I love a huge fan of companies that give back. Um, you know, Tom Shoes, Patagonia, Cliff Bar, um, companies that people really resonate with. So I decided I would actually trademark my mission statement, which is impacting lives from real estate. And then what that means is I donate 10% of my income from real estate to charities that my clients get to choose. So it's been really neat to kind of, what, as I say, to use the business of real estate as a force for good. Um, you know, there's a lot of ego in real estate. It's all about how many houses you sell and what your volume is. And there's nothing wrong with that but I will measure my success in real estate by how much I can donate to my clients' charities. So that's awesome. So yeah, so in a nutshell, um, you know, that's, I don't know if that's, is that yeah, correct? no, that's fantastic. So just as a year to date, bud, what, yeah. I mean, I know you know your numbers. Yeah. What have you donated to charities? So basically I'm, uh, I'm my close. So do you want me to get the whole, so close volume GCI and sure. everything? Yeah. So close, I, I, we're an open book, so I guess, uh, yeah. yeah, close volume is 8.158 or so, um, which is my highest ever. Um, and once again, I've been doing this five years, so I'm really excited about what lies ahead. And for those of you that are new, 
you know, it's like the sky's the limit in this business. Um, GCI is right about 198. I, I didn't hit two because I discounted one of my listings, which I should have never done. Uh, <laughs> or else I could say that I was over two. And uh, amount to charity is basically about this year alone, based on about 16 grand. About 16,000. Wow. Yeah, total, that's awesome. Actually, yeah. The total amount is uh, about $58,000 to my clients' charities in, in basically five years. Wow, 58,000. So when, when the reason I say it, it's not an ego thing for me, the reason I say that is find something that perhaps makes you different. Because when I sit in somebody's living room and they're, you know, it's a competitive situation, like, well, I'm just curious, you know, what makes you different? That makes me different. Yeah. So that's it. That is fantastic. So anyways, awesome. I don't know if that answers. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, um, Mark, how about, how about for you, sir? I know uh, you've got a couple I years. I just want to sit and listen more. I know. <laughs> I know, right? This is the best part about being on a panel yeah. is we get to absorb it all. So, Mark, same thing with you. How's, like, let's let's go with your story and, you know, how how many years in the business and how you have you grown to the level that you are today? So, let's see. started in 88, uh, 31 years ago. Give it back then. It's a whole different, whole different world. I was given two hours of uh, teaching and four open house signs and go get them. <laughs> <laughs> that works, right? <laughs> so I had to figure it out basically. It wasn't yeah. not here. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, but, so then I uh, just uh, sold real estate and tried to figure it out every way I could. Uh, then you know, every different guru that would come to town, we would try to piece things together because it was a good by the system. Of okay. So you guys are pretty much involved. It was probably good. Yeah. Um, and then uh, during the recession, I ended up uh, referring all my business to another broker and uh, up about 40 homes. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. It was so I enjoyed it. Okay. And then uh, bought some rentals. Back and started selling real estate again, and now I'm kind of at a point where I can make some different choices. Awesome. So, have you always been an individual agent, or have you been on teams, or never been on a team? Okay. Always an individual agent. Uh, teams were never really even a thing until uh, okay. Kelly Williams came along and <coughs> something made yeah. it feasible. So, um, you know, people, other agents would partner. That was everyone was just kind of on their own trying to figure out what to do. Yeah. Okay. Years ago. Consequently, not doing as good job as we were doing. Yeah. So where would you say? I know, Bud, you mentioned your your focus being open houses and door knocking. Um, Mark, how about your business? Where is your business focused? Well, it's kind of evolved to uh, referral repeat. About uh, what is it? Sixty-five uh, percent. 65 this last year, probably this is up until uh, September, 65% referral repeat, and then 19% uh, open houses. Okay. So, and then the rest uh, miscellaneous. So I, I really try to focus on those two things, and whatever else comes. comes. But I, I figured out, you know, even after you, know, you do your GPS, map out, you know, three different legs, and you know what you're going to do, pretty much just. Find one and then you throw the other two away. You just get really good at that. And then until you have perfected and then, then bring it. Love if it. you try to do too many things, you won't really want to do any of them. Or at least that's what I found. Jack of all trades, master of none. Right? How many balls in the hole in there? Yep. Um, so, Mark, as far as um, production and GCI, where, where are we sitting this year? Uh, let's see, through September. Uh, I just have no date on it, but uh, 319000 um, Expenses are at uh, uh, 47000 or 15%, so 85% profit. That is very impressive. And you'd say, um, as far as volume production? Uh, let's see. I don't, I don't sure I've looked at this too often, but let's see, 11, uh, 12 million. Okay, awesome. And uh, 20, 
the 26 deals on the contract will close. Awesome. Absolutely love the fact that you both know your numbers. Bauer's <laughs> um, my hero because I'm the opposite. Eighty percent of right. my business <laughs> comes say. from strangers that I meet at open houses and door knocking, and then twenty percent from Spear. So I need to listen to this guy. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, yeah. so much, I feel like <clears throat> um, most of us in the area are either just starting out or have been in business for thirty-one years. So that's probably contributes to your referral repeat business. You've done a really great job for a lot of people over the years. Did you do things differently at a certain point? I mean, I know you said like you tried a lot of things. Like, was were there things that you found earlier in the career that you tried and then you just, they worked oh, yeah. for you, so you stuck with it? Yeah, I was uh, lost for a long time. I love it. No, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> just, uh, you Things that I think other people can do, or one of the main things we should do, would be to try all kinds of lead generation models and find the one that is the most palatable. None of them you're probably going to get excited about. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But you just got you got to find one that is palatable enough that you will continue to do it over and over and over. Um, I'm not a uh, expires. Uh, I don't think I've ever, I've never called it expired. I call it old like kind of old. So for sale by owners, uh, expires um, for door knocking, for door knocking sake only, I don't do. I do uh, door knock around my open house to, to uh, invite people to my open house, but not just randomly start going down the block without you know, a reason to be there. But you know, just a few years ago, I remember when I decided I'm doing referral repeat and I'm doing open houses and I'm not doing anything else. And it just really clarified for me what classes to attend, which ones not to. It made it much easier to just say, no, nope, I'm not doing that. I keep hammering at this until the third is under the hood. And my business really picked up dramatically. So that's about like focus. going small. But I had to do a lot of different things in order to figure out which ones I was going to pick. Yeah. And I just stuck with it. Yeah. I love that. Well, and even, you know, saying, flipping the question, the same thing back to you, bud. You know, you're, which I think is really impressive, is the fact that your non database business is 80%, right? How do you do that? Like, I, I mean, truly, how do you do it? Like, that's amazing. It's amazing. Those numbers are amazing. So on both sides. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just, I, I, I think I make people feel very comfortable. I try to engage with them. I'm never about, and this might go against, you know, I'm never about just getting an appointment. You know, I want to make people feel comfortable so I can find out. My whole world is based around finding out what is their situation. You know, do they even have a need? You know, I mean, I, you know, I, my, uh, oh, by the way, my, uh, I, I'm, I'm humbled because I thought I was, my profit margin is 65%, right? So I wanted it, but so, yep. but it can show you that you can have a profitable business by doing kind of what, what Mark and I do. But I just, my ideal client is somebody who wants help, somebody who needs help, and somebody who is willing to let me help them. So I keep that in mind as I'm talking to people and I'm like, okay, are we a fit? Um, you know, so I think, it, and I just, like Mark said, I just do it over and over and over again. And um, I used to be bummed out because on, a, I'll give you a perfect example. This Sunday, I'm on the couch, like everybody else watching the Broncos game, had an open house not far from where I kind of farm um, from like 2 o'clock to like 4.30 because it's getting dark at 5. Like, I really don't feel like doing this, you know. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm like, I've had a great year. I can just coast and get ready. But I'm like, you know, I owe it to myself and to my family, to my wife and daughter, to go to work. It's Sunday. I, I, I still work on Sundays. Mondays, Tuesdays, you know, you're never going to find me. I'll be on the phone, but I'll be golfing or skiing or so. So basically, you know, I put a golf shirt and slacks on and went and put my signs out. You know, I have about 17 open house signs. And there were two groups that came through. And both, I just, they were not willing, ready, or able. They wanted nothing to do with me. And 
it's like, what's my mindset around that? Do I view that as a, God, what am I doing? I should just go spend money on Zillow. This doesn't work. You know, or I can look at it as, you know what? For two and a half hours, I had my signs all over town as people are going from home to Kings or to Starbucks or where Broncos game's over, everybody's in a bummed out mood. So it's all your mindset. And I just think, that was a long answer to your question, but no, 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 I just think great. the ability to just make people feel comfortable. You know, nobody wants to be sold to, people want to be helped. And and so I'm not, I'm not, and sometimes, listen, I, I miss opportunity because I don't ask the right questions or I don't get contact info. I mean, listen, this is from a guy who two years later, Hey, it's Bud. I met you at that open house in um, Lone Tree about three years ago. Just curious to see if you were, you know, who? You know what I mean? I, I sort of find I'm chasing people. What I'm trying to, sh my shift away from is I don't really want to chase anybody. I want to find people that want to work with me, that I want to work with, that have a real estate need, and that perhaps I could help. So nothing is, not, it doesn't come easy. I mean, every time I talk to my dad, he's like, Nothing comes easy. So if you want an easy business, this is probably not, not. I mean, most agents don't do 100 open houses a year, you know. And so, it, but it contributes to the profit margin because literally, other than Boomerang, which I do, you know, thanks to Mark Bauer's recommendation, about 300 of those a month. Other than that, it's all just meeting people and trying to help if I can. And if I can't, that's okay. I don't beat myself up anymore that somebody comes into an open house and I don't get name, phone number, social security number, date of birth, you know, when they're gonna move in eight years and who all their 88 friends are. You know, sometimes, you know, I just, I, 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 sometimes I'm not that good. So that's why I have to do it over and over again. But sometimes, you know, what, what and I, I might've said this to somebody last week, the magic happens in my world. Let's say I'm doing an open house and, and once again, a blind squirrel finds an acorn, once in a while. But basically the magic happens when I'm talking to somebody, just being myself, like Mark said, find something that you actually enjoy, you know, for your lead gen. And the magic happens when somebody says to me, hey bud, you've been so helpful. Could we give you our name and phone number so that if you see something, you'll let us know. Then I feel like, okay, they, they might need help. They may want help, and then they actually might want me to help them. And so that's been sort of my best successes this year. It's just, it happens naturally. I'm not, you know, and listen, I mess it up and I miss opportunity and people maybe go to a, another open house around the corner and they get that client, that agent gets them. But in my world, I just want to try to connect with people and find out what their situation is so that they're, to see if there's an opportunity to help them. Sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. That's awesome. That was a long answer. No, that was a fantastic answer. So, um, question for you because I've been to one of your open houses, and you don't you do them a little differently. Like for example, the one that I was at, I had a chance to meet your clients. It was very relaxed. You were doing a barbecue. Oh, yeah. There was lawn chairs in the front yard. Yeah. Like no, it was relaxed. Like you just walk up and it's oh, yeah. handshakes and all the way happy. Happy clients, right? for a second. Yeah, I love you too. Yeah. So I decided, okay, how can I be different? There's a million, you know, over 38,000. I don't focus on that. I focus on what I can do every day to basically make my family proud of me or so. So I decided, okay, how can open houses be different? And so I'm like, you know what? Why don't we just, my, I have a good lender buddy, very dear friend of mine who's my lender, preferred lender. So what if we went to, he went to Costco and grabbed some burgers and dogs. And next thing you know, you know, we, we, he has a grill. I'm like, perfect, let's try this. So we literally have a folding table. We have it in the driveway, and we're having a blast. We've got chalk for kids. we got Broncos chairs in the front. We have little chairs for little kids. And it's just, you'd be amazed at how people come up because people are suspicious. They don't want to give their contact info because they don't want to be spammed for the rest of their life. That's why they're not giving you their info. You haven't earned their trust yet. So right away, people come up, and it's like, okay, we're different. I'm like, I'm Bud. Meanwhile, my sign's right there in my picture, you know. <laughs> I'm like, welcome. I said, tell them, we're different. Okay, before you go toward the house, we talk all this fancy house stuff. Order a burger or a dog with my buddy Chris. He's a lender. And we've got burgers and dogs and chips and sodas and water. Go toward the house and then tell us what you think and have lunch on us. And it's not rocket science, and we do it from like, 11.45 to like 
on a Saturday normally, and I do market around that. I door knock around that. I mean, I try to get the word out through my clients posting on next door. I mean, there was one time when we had almost 50 people in the front yard. Now, I'm not saying that all 50 of those are like, Bud's our guy. But what it does more importantly, it does a lot of things, but what it does the most is it proves to my client that I'm working. That's why people beat you up on commission because they, don't, they feel like, I'm gonna pay you what? To list my house? Because they don't think you're gonna do all this work. So it's just an example, just an, and it's not rocket science, but we've had fun with it and, um, and you know, so. I love that. Sam, so here was the text message I got from Bud. Hungry, question mark, stop by, address. That was literally the text message I got. I was like, I pull up and I was like, oh, wow. And it's literally like Bud's it's like in the front. Service. It's like everyone's just out in the yard. And then, hey, you know, go check out the house, right? And it was getting in line to one, get the burgers and the dogs, and then two, getting in line to go in the house. Changes the perception completely to a traditional open house. So I wanted to highlight that for a moment because I, I thought that was pretty cool. Like yeah. hungry, question mark, here's the address, stop by. That was, that was it. That what, was I, it. what I never want when I look at marketing, what's home team room is B2. I mean, if you think of those two words, it's like every agent is doing 11 to 2, you know, and they've got cookies and waters and vanilla candles and nothing wrong with that. But the problem is I would eat all the cookies or so. And so I don't do cookies in my book. But it's like, <laughs> <just don't>, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be me too. And so as you all look at your businesses, it's like, what can you do to be different so it's not just me too? And you tend to be commoditized at that. I love that. So let's switch the conversation now in the profit markets. So Mark, holy goodness, how do you do that? How do you hold an 80% profit margin? Uh, well, good question. Well, I've got my lender split in half on marketing. Okay, so let's talk more about so that. So I do, uh, so I do uh, outbound engine, which is uh, email and, and social media. I'm really, really busy on social media, but I Leverage, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I do a, a boomerang, which is postcards that offer two for one offer options, uh, and then uh, so that's so I figured out a long time ago that if I have leads or if I you know all my clients obviously I have their phone number, address, and name, and so on, but on you know people that I meet at an open house, I'm not that good. I don't get all that information every time. Um, I, I Normally, don't just take names for taking names. I don't do that. I just I have to have a conversation with someone, a meaningful conversation. Otherwise, I I don't grab any other information. I don't, I don't want to chase them. So, um, but a lot of times, you know, you get one piece of information, you know, the address, but not the email, the email, not the address. So I just decided I was trying to dice that up and figure out how to, you know, have different groups. Finally, I just said, heck with it. Everyone uh, is on the same list. Everyone gets an email, everyone's an address, some people don't have the address, and so what, go on the list. And, and uh, then I have uh, notepads, which I think are really old school. I don't know if anybody does that anymore, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I know I've succeeded when I go over to the house and throwing uh, horns on me, you know, <laughs> over here. <laughs> it's a little billboard, 25 sheets, little billboards in their house, all the time, you sit around, you know, so that I do that once a quarter for the contract. So, and then I get my lender to split the cost on all of those, as well as I uh, do pot pies, about 100, deliver over 100 cookie boxes in Costco every you know, so That's my marketing. That's and my, middle. that's my, that's my, you know, yeah, passive marketing except for top so. That's awesome. So, um, but same question. Yeah. How, again, Awesome, awesome profit margin here, sixty-five percent. How do you do that? Um, you know, basically, uh, you know, I do boomerang or so. Um, I do, uh, uh, and literally, it's it's you know, open house door knocking or so. Which really, if you if you build a business around those two levers, you'll find you have a very high profit margin business. Um, and I just, I still, I'm, matter of fact, I'm doing two client events for the holidays. I'm 
So I do about four client parties a year. We just did a big barbecue in our backyard at DJ catered by Bono's, nothing like the Duncan's party, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm working on it. Um, but uh, I just, I want to be able to connect with people and have them feel comfortable. And obviously the goal is referrals or so. I'm not there yet. And a lot of people that have used me, I've only been doing this for five years, so they're not at that seven year window yet. So I can't afford to wait for my phone to ring. You know, every one of our friends knows I'm in the business, they know about the charity, I mean, you know, social media, you name it, I'm on it. But basically, it's just, it's, it's literally, you know, it's not what you make, it's what you keep. So every day I'm like, okay, is this expense, you know, gonna, gonna move my business forward or am I just playing office here? You know, I don't, for example, I don't have my own logo. You know, I just use the KW logo and I put Bud Doyle, you know, if I ever do anything that requires the logo. So I don't, I, I just think all the time about what are my income producing activities. And in my world, they don't really cost me a dime. Other than my time, my time is valuable, but I'm not paying, I'm not buying the business. It's basically, I was thinking about it. And I think somebody used that term, maybe at Mega Camp or so. I just, I, you either as a new agent or you've been doing this for a couple of years or, or whatever, you either have more time or more money. And in my world, I got more time. And so it's like, okay, what am I gonna do with the time I have? I mean, my job is to talk to 75 people a week. That's my job. Everything else is secondary. And that comes through open house and door knock. And honestly, that's why I've added door knocking because I wasn't getting 75 connections. I don't, if any of you do open houses, the traffic is down a little bit. <clears throat> so I still have to do the behaviors to, you know, to, to be able to try to get my, I don't do it every week, but that's my promise to myself. And then I just sort of, obviously I improve my skills and I do, you know, I'm doing a big Thanksgiving project where I actually went to Hobby Lobby and Target and got a bunch of like coffee cups to say thankful, put them in a little, they're five bucks, put them in a little bag, a little, you know, a little fall bag. So staying away from the holidays and next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to drive around to about 58 homes and from Westminster to the Springs and just with a handwritten note, knock on the door. If they're not there, just leave them on the front. Kind of like your, you know, Popeye thing, but it gets away from the holidays because sometimes stuff gets lost in the holidays or so. So that'll be Thanksgiving and then Christmas. We do a big Butts Home. Actually, you've been yeah, with, uh, with yeah, your son. Yeah. We yeah. do a big Butts Home team awesome. holiday party at our house on a Saturday morning in December. You know, face painter, balloon twister, Santa Claus. You know, I leverage out. You know, obviously, I'm not in the Santa Claus outfit like I am on Saturday. But, you know, we basically provide value to people. And I don't bring up, at our barbecue, I didn't bring up one more of our bills. True story. True story. I just, now what I will do at, at the holiday thing, and this is just, you know, something to think about as to, it doesn't have to be a holiday party. Now, I'm going to spend a lot of money on this party, but it's, we also bring the charity, one of the charities that I donated to this year, and they get for 10 minutes to talk about their charity. And then the only ask I have is, hey, we're going to feed you breakfast. We're going to get your kids face painted and, and balloon animals or whatever. And you're going to get pictures of Santa. The only ask is that you bring an unwrapped toy that will donate to Toys for Tots. So it's just, it's not rocket science. It's just how, do I, how can I connect with people? Because ideally, I want a business like Mark's. I mean, I kind of do, we both do sort of old school business, but I do it the hard way. I mean, I'm... I'm doing a hundred open houses a year, so I continue to and door knock a, a full load of houses because I want to get to the point where our friends, you know, are like, okay, this guy gets it and he's earned our trust to be able to. We're going to use him just because you have a license doesn't necessarily mean they're going to use you, and that's a hard from a guy who's lived that a little bit. That's a hard pill to swallow. So for me, it serves as motivation to be like, you know what? I'm just going to, nobody's going to outwork me and I'm going to lose a lot, but I'm going to at least put in the work. I, was, I kind of got off on a tangent. No, no, no. I think it's great. Is it, I mean, it's valuable, right? Absolutely. I have a quick question about the door knocking. So there's been mixed feelings about being able to live the time. Yes. How do you deal with that? Well, that's a very good question. And basically, and I have a good answer. So if I... And I, I tend to kind of focus on the Highland Drain, Douglas County area. If I was to go to, if I was to not knock on every house that said no soliciting, right. I'd probably be in Westminster. Right. Just driving up there. 
So what I do is I basically own it right away. You know, when they open the door, you know, Absolutely. hi, my name is Bud Doyle. I'm a local realtor with Keller Williams. I saw your sign. I'm not selling anything today. Today. <laughs> That's a good point. Tomorrow, yeah. you know, and so it's like, you know what? And, and I've had people say, can you read? And I'm like, sorry about that. Next. You know, but it's just, and I've also had listings come from a guy that had a no listening, but I just, all I have is a one pager that shows the sold homes in that neck of the woods. And they may or may not take it, but I am not going to kind of play games here and stuff. I literally am not there to sell them. I'm just there to provide a piece of valuable information. If they choose to not take it, so be it. And you know, and people are like, oh, no, no, okay, you're okay, you know. And then I say, did I catch you at a bad time? So I'm asking permission to talk to them, or so. And I'm different from Mark because I will randomly door knock, not around my listings, because that's the only way I'm going to get my 75 contacts. I mean, I, I just, I, I, you know, I don't have a lot of repeat referral yet. So in the meantime. I've got to go to work, you know, five days a week. So when you knock on these random homes, you're just providing them a sold list within that area? Yes. A one pager that literally is so easy to print out off RE Colorado yeah. or so kind of the sold homes. And it might be that street, might be a street around with my business. It's nothing fancy. And it's just, but I can print it out at eight o'clock in the morning. I can staple, I, mean, I actually have them in my car. If it doesn't snow, I'm going to door knock later this afternoon for an hour. So, and then just try to provide value to people, but have conversations. I mean, can I give a quick success story? Of course. So I, I was in a farm that I, I work on a lot and knocked on the guy's door. He opens the door and he's like, Bud Doyle, hardest working realtor I've ever met. And I'm like, tell me your first name again. He said, Joe. Hey, I'm like, dude, Joe, he's like, yeah. Like, and I recognized him because I probably knocked on his door three or four times over the course of the last two years. I said, I said, hey, I catch you bad time. He said, no, no, I always got time. You know, appreciate you coming by. I said, you probably don't have any real estate needs this fall. And this was in July or so. Like, you know, you probably don't have real estate needs, you know, this late summer or fall. So actually, he said, we need to sell and buy. And we were actually going to call you next week. <laughs> True story, loss. God's honest truth. If Joe Ryan was sitting here, he'd be like, <laughs> you know. And now, you know, we sold in Highlands Ranch. Quick, quick, you know, over at over list price, bought in Castle Rock or so, and is now a dear friend of mine. But the story, the success is, is that, you know, and I earned a good living off of the, the work I did for him or so, and we donated to a charity that meant a lot to his wife is at stroke. So it's really a sad situation. And it's like, I would have never met that guy if I didn't decide on a Wednesday at two o'clock to get off my, you know, to get out of my house and to go knock on some doors for an hour and a half. And I often say I have a hell of a lot more shot of selling some real estate, either at an open house or door knocking than I do sitting in my kitchen or in my home office being like, okay, ah, I'm ready. I'm ready for all this business. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. I called all, all my friends. Felt like that before, right? <laughs> I called all my friends. I'm like, you know, nobody knows anybody right now or, you know, this, that, and the other. So I'm like, okay, so I got to go to work. That was that was a long did I answer oh, your question? Great. Thank you very much. The the best part I think with that story is that perception. The public perception. Yes. Bud Doyle, the hardest working realtor I know. True story, that's exactly what he said. That's awesome. That should be your slogan. That's awesome. <laughs> right? Actually I was gonna say Denver's most generous realtor, but I don't know if I am, but um but, but, and then yeah. the thing is is that I discounted a little bit because he was buy sell, but it was never about well bud, you know, we're to be honest with you, anytime somebody says that to you, bad news is coming. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to be honest with you, you know, we are talking to nine agents. So listen, if, if you could be this guy's rate, you know, we'll, we'll let you put your sign in the yard. I don't want to do business that way. I really don't. I mean, literally, it was your our guy. You know, we literally set up a, an appointment that day, and he's like, I, I, you're, I'm going to use you. So let's see if we can make this work for both parties. Or so, and it was by stuff. That's almost a million dollars of real estate close volume from knocking on the door. So very good. So you're door knocking for your own listing. Um, so you've got the uh, you've got the invitation and you've got the uh, the, the printout from RE Colorado. So no. So most of the time, 
I don't have enough listings, I wish I did, <laughs> to door knock all year long around my listings. I just pick random neighborhoods and I map it out on, you know, on, on um, Google Maps or so. And obviously I know these neighborhoods. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna knock this street, these three streets from, in my, in my world, and this is why I don't come to team meeting and Patrick understands that, from 11 to one or so, then I go eat lunch or something or you know, Chick-fil-A or whatever. And then I go back out from like 2.30 to 3.30 and that's my lead generation window. Because people say, well, bud, why don't you just do it late in the day when everybody's home? When people are getting home from work, kids are getting home from school, because I know myself. If I wait all day long, I am never gonna do it. I'm gonna find eight million reasons to go to the gym, pick up my daughter from school, you know, I really crave that Starbucks, you know, whatever. So, anyways, I'm gonna I love it. it. I love it. Yeah, so then what's your handout for a listing? Um, I mean, so you're doing an open house and, and you're door knocking, say, Thursday for that Saturday, Sunday yes. open house. What are you handing them? Basically, a, 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 like a one pager. It's like, a, I think it's a, a, a client one page from Murray, Colorado or so. Okay. It's very short and sweet. And then also a sticker or so. Stop by our barbecue on Saturday from 1130 to 130. Free burgers, dogs, you know. I see you do that a lot. The burger, the like yeah, I did it probably about, I probably did about 20 of those this year. Oh, and it's usually two of you can pull it off? Me and my lender. Okay. Now, someday I'm going to be really fancy and have like a, you know, street taco truck, you know. I um, mean, that might be price point, honestly, um, depending on. But it's just a way to be different, and it's a way to show value to your clients so you're not giving away your hard-earned money. I mean, I talked about we're going to do a barbecue. And I'm very clear, it's, this, there's no guarantee this is gonna sell your house, but I'm gonna do everything I possibly can to get as many people in the door as I possibly can. Well, and I like how you said your your sellers really feel like you're working hard. Yes, they do. And ultimately, you're working hard at getting you good. Yes, so, yeah, that Joe, it's Brian. It's a win-win yeah. win situation. Yeah. And you've been doing that for years, so I mean, you know. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> but taking care of your clients. Yeah. Um, I, I did have another question, just because you know you're eighty percent new business. So like, I know this is supposed to be a well known. Yeah, that's the question. Um, what do each of you do? I mean, you do Popeyes and things like that. Um, do you do like the DTV two calls where you're making phone calls or face to face conversations with these clients? Like, how are you? Because if you only do one Popeye a year, like I know you're doing emails, but are you doing face to face and voice to voice more than just one year? Um, no. <laughs> so I'm I'm not a good call person. I'm not a social person. I'm not a call person. I should call my people. <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> 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 I would do a lot better if I did. I do truly believe that it's a good idea. So I'm just, <laughs> I can't even, I'm, I'm going to be real, and I've told you this before, my husband thinks that you walk on water. Like, he just thinks you're the greatest realtor that he's ever met in the history of ever. But um, awesome. and now you, you do 65% referral repeat business, and you're not doing it. Like, what kind of service are you providing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good question. So, so when I'm working with someone, I, I'm really focused on doing a great job, number one. I mean, that sounds like... Yeah, do a great job. Great job. Um, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Yeah, what does, what does a good mean? job mean? Okay, well, I've put a lot of effort into... Educating my clients uh, about real estate and about what it means to uh, how to actually increase value on a property. There's, you know, I, I never enter a house uh, when somebody says, "Hey, how much is my house worth?" I never go in with just answering that question. I always go in with, "Here's what it could be worth if you did this, this, and this." And part of that is just in me from my flipping days, um, that I can always see what the value could be and not just what it is today. Uh, not everybody's op 
open to uh, doing work. Some people say, hey, I just want to sell it as it is. Fine, we, can, we have a program for that. <laughs> but if you want to do this, this, and this, I help them uh, uh, get more profit out of their house. Right? And so and then I educate them on how, uh, how it, it's possible to actually sell your house for more. And um, how do you sell a home quickly at a high price? That's the question that I've asked from the day that I started flipping homes. It changed my paradigm completely uh, because there is a way. Uh, and so I think they appreciate that. I show the insights of the business of how this actually works. Uh, so I'm teaching them all the way through the process. And so I think consequently they think I know what I'm doing and they want to call me back. That's my theory. But you see, you'll see, I mean, I'm just really impressed with that with her working business and not doing those things because you see a lot of that, how many people choose to be a realtor, they don't use the same one, and it's a really, I don't remember the numbers, but it's a high percentage of people that they don't go back to the same realtor, and if you're not doing those things that we are kind of learning to do to keep top of mind, you know, which is we're having the face-to-face -face conversations. We're making the phone calls to make sure that even after they've used us, they remember us. I'm just really impressed by the fact that they are still remembering you. So you must have done a yeah. good job. But I do think you should do that. Yeah, you should call me. <laughs> but you are, <laughs> you are, you are um, they're on an email campaign, it sounds like, and you're doing yeah, so, there, so I, I'm, I'm there passively. I'm, I'm in their mailbox, I my picture, I've taken specifically that is maybe recognizable a little more. That's why I chose that type of photo that I have. Uh, that's kind of my brand is my photo. I have an, I have my open house signs um, branded with that photo as well as my for sale signs. So when I'm doing open houses, people begin to recognize, uh, oh, there's that guy over there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and all my information is the same. Oh, so they, they see it, you know, then the uh, notepads come on, uh, you know, so it's not like I'm not reminding them, it's just passive. And I tend to, I do about 21 contacts a year, um, 12 of them are boomerang, so which is a great way to see top of mind. You know, it's a, it, it, it fits my personality. 21, 21. 21 contacts, but 12 of them are boomerang, or 12, 12, because it's once a month. It's like, hey, have lunch on me. Like this month, it's two for one at Cuba, Cuba, which a lot of people are like, our space. Our Yeah, yeah. And then I do, I do four calls, quarterly calls. And here's the thing: ninety-nine percent of the people do not call me back. I'm okay with that. It's and it's just like, hey, just checking in, seeing. How, I don't take it personally. People are busy, you know. But I'm sure. Oh, it's Bud. You know, I'm sure he's just checking in. So, so four calls quarterly, and then four client parties, and then a. Um, uh, Thanksgiving gift next year. Question for you: Were you always okay with that? No, no. Okay, expand on that. Piece a bit. Yeah, it's like you know, hey, you know, just checking in, seeing how you're doing, how the kids are doing, how you're enjoying the house, blah blah blah. Hey, just give me a shout when you get a chance. You know, and maybe my scripting wasn't right, or you know, it, and it was like it was an opt-in to call back, and I would take it personally. Like, yeah, I just I just spent three hours because I have to do it at a park. I can't do it at my house, or else I'll watch college football or do whatever. <laughs> I literally go sit in my car on my Bluetooth at the park and and go through my phone to all my contacts okay. or so. And it's like it, I can't control if they call me back or not. All like or you know putting a nice gift on their front porch and not getting a text back. I can't control that. I control what I can control, which is the behaviors or so. And then basically, you know, to just keep, continue to provide value. You know, I do ask, hey, do you, do you know of anybody thinking of buying or selling? If so, you know, would be happy to help them, you know, or so. So I do throw in a bit of, it's probably not as good as it could be. Yeah, everybody has room for improvement. But, you know, I mean, we spent a lot of money on a summer party. A whole load of people show up. But it's not like, hey, bud, call, call this guy, call this guy, call this guy. It didn't, in my world, I wish that happened, but it didn't. But I was okay with it because I just keep pouring into my clients or so and their kids and you know and stuff like that. So um, so I'm I'm okay now if I make 48 calls 
and I have three people that text me back. Hey, thanks for the message. We're good. We'll see you at the holiday party. Happy holidays. That's awesome. So both of you are highly, highly relational just in different aspects. <laughs> right? Well, Mark, you must be 65% with your repeat, right? You're I don't know about somewhere. relational. <laughs> right, right. It's because Mark's on everybody's shop. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. So, so okay. question, right. Yeah, it works. So question for you, and Mark, we'll start with you. 80% profit margin. What opportunities has that opened up? I know you talked about your fix and flip business. As you're, as you're running 80% profit margin, what does your world look like now? Uh, well, that, that definitely, uh, you know, I, I, I do... Uh, put a focus on saving. So, I, you know, number one, save from day one. You get a commission check, and I go to the bank, split it right there. I don't commingle the government's money with my money. So you have different accounts. Separate accounts. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And I just right there at the bank, I split it up. Thirty percent put into an account. Usually, have money left over from the year, which is great. Um, so uh, that, and then, uh, you know, anybody that's thinking about buying properties, unless you guys are independently wealthy or have lots of extra money, uh, it's tough to get started if you don't have down payment. Right? So a long time ago, I just started saving money, but 401k, uh, I would always try to max out 401k or IRA or, or Roths or, or whatever, all, all of them, I could. And, um, <clears throat> Over time, it doesn't seem like much, but over time, that builds up. And then I started buying, started using my retirement accounts for buying properties. So uh, I own rental properties, my IRAs, 401k, owns my rental properties for retirement. So that's uh, okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. able to feed that that opportunity to even build more passive income. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you gotta you gotta save for that down payment. You know, people are always worried. Well, what do I? How do I invest this money? It's only five thousand dollars or whatever it is. Don't worry about it. Just keep saving it. Keep saving, and then you'll get that down payment to be able to buy a property someday. And uh, I remember back in uh, you know there are ebbs and flows of this business. And uh, when I got into the business in '88, it was uh, foreclosures on every corner. Uh, it was a really bad time in Denver, even though it was worse than the recession. Um, and I was only like, uh, I don't know how old I was, 26 years old or something. I had, no, I had no perspective in the business of what opportunity was there that I could have bought properties for almost no commission, or no, no down payment, just yeah. the commission that I earned, I could have bought properties. So you're putting them on credit card. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I've sold the properties so where they put on credit card comes. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, so I didn't have any perspective, and then that, that kind of went away. The market improved in the '90s, and then uh, then I said, you know what? Next time this comes around, I'm going to be ready. So I just kept saving, investing, saving, investing, and then during the recession in, in 2007, I um, saw the market was changing. I didn't know how bad it was. Going so I'm changing. And I said, this is the opportunity. And I had the money for some payments. So I, for actually to, to buy properties uh, to fix them. Uh, which led into the ability to buy rentals and led into being able to pay them off and, and so on and so forth. Excellent. So as of year to date, uh, how many rentals do you have? No, only seven now. Okay. No. Okay. I've had, I've had, I've had a couple of properties. Good. Good. That's awesome. That's awesome. But same question. So 65% profit margin, again, awesome. And what opportunities has this created? You know, I, and this is probably kind of a bit of a personal question for us. Uh, my wife had worked for Bear Pharmaceuticals for about 24 years, kind of rose up the ranks and basically covered the whole western part of the U.S. for, a, uh, for one of their divisions. And she actually got um, down, laid off. They had a huge, massive layoff. Bear Pharmaceuticals did. Their stock was tanking. It was it was a nightmare, but that happened in December of last year, and so you know she's on severance. She got a nice severance package or so. But what it, it's crazy how she got laid off from Bear, and yet I have my best year ever in real estate, and she actually works at 
daughter's high school. She works with my community high school now. Kind of taking autistic kids from one class to the next and just loves it. It feeds her soul or so. And so what this has done is, you know, all of a sudden it's like the goal is to keep going so that she could be at that school for another two years. My daughter's a sophomore in high school or so if she so chooses, you know, I mean, Bear has kind of reached out back. There's, you know, just big corporate America is a whole different animal. There's been a whole regime change and now they want her back or so, but she's committed to the school through in a May. Um, one other thing it did also is in terms of meeting with revenue is I've decided, because um, I've spent a lot of time in a certain part of Highlands Ranch um, to, uh, I'm going to invest in some bus shelters or so, which, you know, I mean, and, and um, which will start in January. And, you know, and that's a big deal for me. I mean, it's, you know, because I've never really done anything like that. And my expectation is not that that's going to make the phone ring. You know, my picture will be there, my name. You know, it's to the point now where I knock on their door, like, oh, we know who you are or so. But it's not about substituting that and like, okay, I'm not going to open house next year because I have a bus shelter on the way to King Supers or so. What it will do, it's more of a branding play or so. I still have to do the work even almost twice as hard because I want to be able to, you know, have open houses or have listings around where these bus shelters are or so. So, but it's a, it's something that's taken me five years to get to that point where I feel like, okay, I can invest in my business or so, but it doesn't take away from doing open houses or door knocking in my world. I almost, I almost have to do it more to sort of justify that, that expense. Sure. Does, that, does that answer your question? Absolutely. Absolutely. So going forward now, uh, which I appreciate, this is awesome, right? So um, going forward now, 2020, what does that look like? So, I mean, but you kind of led into that a little bit. Mark, what is it, what is it, you have an 80% profit margin, right? 85, <laughs> let's get, make sure that that's corrected, right? 85% profit margin. That is awesome. You have a diversified portfolio, you have, you know, rental properties and passive income coming in from Lowe's. What does 2020 look like? Uh, passive income for the first time will be January 1st. So okay. that's when I turn the Awesome. So, uh, so that's, that's going to give me some different options. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what that looks like right now. So awesome. Yeah. So semi retirement. I'm not going to sit around. <laughs> Yeah. So, and I've got quite a database of people, so I'll be able to probably um, uh, be more selective on who I work with and who I don't, which is just some options that you get to save. Yeah. yeah. Love it. So, I love it. And both of you hold by schedules, which is amazing. I love your voice now. Love it. Oh. Um, Ron, well, uh, I don't know, what does it say? They just <laughs> I I take off Sunday. Yeah, call me in. <laughs> I take off Sundays. And, 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 it's not 100% true. I mean, I deviate from that. 303-570-1521. And, but while well, that this call's yeah. going on, you also take off, you hold a schedule. You take yes. off Monday, Tuesday. Yes. Work the weekend, but take Monday, Tuesday. Yes. So here's here's the point I'm making, and if this splits up, um, when it does, 65% profit margin, 85% percent profit margin. Yet they hold a schedule and they don't work 24/7. Come on, it's Mark Bauer, Calvin Realty. Please leave a detailed message, and I'll return your call as soon as possible. If you're calling outside of business hours of 8 a.m. to 5:30 p.m. Monday through Saturday, I'll return your call the next business day. I do take off Sunday for church family time to recharge my battery so I can get a better copy of my clients. So thanks for calling. Is that awesome or yeah. what? Like, I love that. Like, seriously, I'm not even, I love it. It's office hours. It's I do take off this day, and here's the why behind why I do that. And oh, by the way, I provide incredible service by doing this. That's awesome. And But you have the same thing where it's you take off Monday, Tuesday. My point to this is, is, Having a 65% profit margin, having an 85% profit margin, yet they gain more time back by holding to a schedule and having actual office hours, which is, 
I think, like, massively commendable. Um, but same question, 2020. How's that look? Sure. So, you know, I, I, I'm working on my goals now. Basically, it's it's sort of transactions. It's, it's um, you know, basically 30 sides is my goal. Um, 15 million is my goal or so. So basically, in a sense, in some respects, sort of doubling, you know, doubling my business or so. I'm filled with hope um, in terms of doing all the work over the years. I mean, I had a call this year, you know, kept in touch with somebody, met in an open house or so, and, you know, and just – check in periodically, anything I can do to help, blah, blah, blah. I met her in an open house two and a half years ago, and this year she listed a $975,000 horse property with me and bought a $675,000 house or so. And the only reason I get those numbers is that I would have never met her if I wasn't sitting in the open house two and a half years ago and just engaged and you know had a nice connection, so kept in touch over the course of two years or so, and then it, it came to, so I'm excited about you know, all the people that I've met over the last couple of years um, and, you know, and, and just and, and continue, continuing. My goal, actually, my biggest goal is to get to $100,000 in charity donations in the yeah. next year and a half. There is the why. Yeah, and that's the why. And so that's, and I would encourage each one of you to find that because that's what gets you, that, that's what gets me out of the car when I pull into a neighborhood. That's what gets me off the couch on a Sunday and I'm like, I really don't feel like doing this. I mean, listen, I'm full of energy, but when I'm on the couch watching the Broncos and it's halftime, you know, I'm like, oh, I can't believe, why don't I just have all these friends that have all these houses in Pradera and Casablanca <laughs> Village and Moultrie and how they're like, why don't they just call me? It'll be so easy. I'll make, you know, and it just, you know, until that happens or until somebody shows me a different way or a better way to, to hit my goals and to, you know, to earn, my living, I'm gonna keep kind of doing what I'm doing. Did you have a question? That uh, the woman that sold the horse property, just curious, those two and a half years since you met her at the open house, what was your follow-up like and how many times did you talk to her? Sure, sure, good question. To not beyond leaving a voicemail. Yeah, yeah, I mean, honestly, maybe two or three times a year. You know, I catch her, a lot of times I call Sphere on Saturdays. Okay. Or so, you know, people are busy, you know, and, and listen, Everybody find their own way, but I, on a Saturday from one to four, if it's time to call, I'm, you know, that's when I do it. Um, she was, I set her up on Boomerang or so, and I would call her four, four times a year, just checking in, invite her to all of our parties or so. And then finally, she's like, you know what, I think I'm ready. And this was last fall. So, and then the house listed, I want to say in June. So it wasn't a, it's no quick, you know, okay, yeah, hey, list, you know, yeah, now I'll, I'll give you 10 listings and, you know, you'll make 68 grand in the next month. It was a process of staying in touch and always trying to provide value or so, as opposed to what can you do for me? It was more about what can I do to help or anything? And then it came time to, okay, let's go out. And I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really a horse guy, but <laughs> she knew that I cared. I mean, I even put a full page ad in this like California horse trader magazine that like all the horse people read. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm like to have a full page ad in a, in a horse magazine. It's kind of fun to have it in my office, <laughs> but it meant a lot to her <laughs> because she's like, you know, I mean, I was going to earn a nice living and I was going to get the buy side. And she's like, would you mind putting in that? Not, not normally I don't do that. I'm not, you know, but for her, because of the trust and the rapport that was built, I said, you know what? Yes, I will add in, uh, you know, a full page ad in this horse bank. Now it didn't yield anything yet, but you know, I might get a call and become horse guy. So <laughs> get you some boots. Yeah, get exactly. you some boots. Did I answer the I question? Think that was great. Well, yeah. So let's let's take now like completely open forum. Next couple minutes on questions. So what other questions do you have for Mark and Bud while you have them up in front? Because I know I'm internalizing a lot of this and learning a lot. So. Do you prefer flipping houses or ordering, selling, buying, selling houses? Do, do I prefer flipping houses like you did before? Or, or actually working with clients? Mm -hmm. uh, flipping houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he doesn't have to talk to them. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, there's nobody to call at all. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not, even, not even that I can even feel guilty for it. Right. Not calling. <laughs> What other questions we have? What would you recommend? You know, I know we have some, you know, it, 
we have all varying levels of production, right? Some folks who are from here, some from other areas, obviously care in Australia, um, Robin, Texas, right? What would you recommend for those who are not from Denver to build their business out? Like what would, I mean, running off of these profit margins, how do you do it? I would say um, open house, you know, and, and I would say, and, and I don't, I don't take this lightly, but you know, there's a lot of, there's some scary things going on in open houses or so. So I would strongly advise, you know, to have a, a, a lender or somebody with you. You know, I mean, there's times, honestly, I'm a big guy, but there's times I felt a little bit uncomfortable when I'm in the kitchen of a house and somebody's walking around or so. Um, but it's just, you never know who's going to walk in the door. And the thing that I always feel like at the end of the day after doing an open house on a Saturday or whatever is that I gave it my best shot. That I actually was in the arena. There's kind of a famous quote or poem, I think, in the arena. You know, that you're basically, you're doing your best and you're putting the effort out. You know, nobody, nobody owes me anything. You know what I mean? Because I have a license, it doesn't mean your friends are going to use you. I wish they all did, but they don't. So I have to do my best to try to meet people in, in whatever way it is that you do it. But, you know, you can literally set up shop and you don't know anybody, but you never know when one person's going to walk. I mean, you know, horse property and a buy side this year from somebody I met literally at an open house two years ago. Now, you obviously need business between now and then, but it's just, you know, if you don't have a big sphere, in my opinion, I think open house is probably one of the best ways to go. Awesome. Mark, what do you think? I, I, think, that's, uh, I think that's true. I think uh, open houses, if I were starting over, well, in fact, that's how I started in 88. Okay. Just doing open houses. I did two open houses every day, every Saturday and Sunday. So four open houses uh, for three years to okay. get my business off the running. Wow. And so, I mean, uh, not a hundred, I don't know how many that would be, but, you know, a lot. So it's a, it was a lot and working seven days a week at the time just to get. You know, it's like a, an airplane going down uh, the runway. you got to get your business off the ground, and then you can pull back. If you never get going fast enough, you'll never get off the ground. So uh, sometimes you got to just hit it hard. And get it going. So, and awesome. I think open houses are probably, uh, you know, there's usually a reason why people are in an open house. And there's not... That's a high concentration of people that are thinking about doing something mm -hmm. compared to other, like knocking on doors, cold calling. That's a very low percentage of people that are thinking about doing something. But if you just do a lot of numbers, then you're going to run into people, right? But open houses that are coming to you, usually they don't waste their time unless they're thinking about something or they just want to prepare, you know, they bought a house last week and now they sure. want to make sure they made the right decision. But other than that, they're kind of thinking about something, whether it's an hour or four years from now, it doesn't matter if you develop a conversation with them. I've had people that call me back uh, uh, two, three, four years down the road because I keep in touch with them. That's awesome. so. Passively. Passively. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> This is still on the open house stuff, but wondering, I know you guys have personalized open house signs and where maybe you would recommend we get those from. And um, do you guys put your own signs out or do you hire someone to do that? Because I know you put out a lot. But that's a difference. Yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> the signs I use are from Oakley Sign and Graphics. They're a KW approved vendor. Um, I know RMD does them local. Yeah. Or so, you know, and they don't have to be branded. I mean, you know, if you have, you know, you could buy 10 sign, what you just say open house, you know, sometimes people get overwhelmed. Like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I don't have the money, but yeah, you can buy an eight, $8 sign, something to get you into business. Um, and actually, I do put out my own signs. And, and sometimes I, my thought on that, I used to, honestly, quite honestly, I used to feel stupid crossing a big intersection with four signs, you know. And like, God, what are these people for life thinking? I mean, it's, you know, as Patrick said, so much of this business is up here. Or I could have a new mindset where it's like, 
I am the hardest worker in the world. And I'm busting my ass here, you know what I mean, to try to kind of provide for my family. And some people like hard workers, some don't. And that's okay. And I'm not saying that people even notice I'm at a big intersection, but I almost take it as a bit of a source of pride now that I, and I have people that beat, you know, like past clients or so, because I, I don't know. Know, you know, <laughs> but it just, it, it's, you know, I just, and it, it takes you know, 45 minutes to put them out, half an hour, and I budget that time. I mean, I take them down on the dark the other day after run, because that Sunday afternoon. But I just, I cross the street kind of with my head held high. And the same with door knocking, because I'm just trying, like everybody else, just to earn a living or so by providing value to people. So I don't feel stupid anymore. Like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. I should just go buy leads from Zillow. You know, this is what I've committed to, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't have the money to do it. So this is what I've committed to. And, you know, just to try to make my family proud that I'm, I'm doing the work and not just playing office. Or I often joke it would be bad for my marriage if I was at home on 11.30 on Saturday. That would not bode well. You know, like, so you're real estate. Yeah, what's going on today? I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to call some friends. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work in my world. So I have to go to work. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I forgot where I bought oh. my signs. Uh, it's, a, it's a KW measure, you know, that's designed for you. But I bought fun things for empty signs. Um, as far as putting out across the intersection with a sign in my hand, uh, I just think every sign I put up is $500. That's what I mean. Could you expand on that? Well, you know, I, I have a belief whether it's true or not. Uh, but I have a belief that I sell a home every time I do an open house. And I think it is true. It's just not right now. It could be three years from now. It could be two years from now. It could be next month. But every time I do an open house, I make a connection and I sell a home. And so if you, if I put out 10 signs at $500, or actually $5,000 a sign, I could put out a few signs. So I don't, I don't, and I don't, I've, I've had that thought before, but I try not to focus on what other people are thinking. Yeah. yeah. Okay, which is you, you, you're doing. Well, so, yeah, yeah. you know, you just, uh, I'm, I'm doing this because I have a goal and I'm going to pay my rentals off. This is what I'm doing. I'm doing what I'm doing. They're doing what they're doing. I'm not worried about you know, it. What, what other people are doing doesn't really matter to, to me. I mean, in a good way, right? I mean, everyone's doing their own thing. And I hope it's kind of important. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, just to piggyback on that, I mean, basically, if I do the math, each open house I've done this year is roughly about 1,800 bucks based on my number of open houses and my GCI. Yep. So, you know what? I, I, I do walk taller now. And, you know, and I, I would continue just to encourage people to work on this part of the business because, you know, you can tell yourself stories that aren't true and just, you know, just a guy just trying to provide for my family. That's all. Yeah. But did you lose signs? I'm sorry? Did you lose signs? I thought you said at one point you had 20. You said 17 today. Did you lose? Because some of them are really I'm marked up. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, and then some, somebody took one one day. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cost of business. Yeah, by the way, I, I, I saw your sign Sunday afternoon when I was driving to an appointment. I almost stopped by and said hi. <laughs> That's awesome. So, I was, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was, I was just going to say, if, uh, you know, and I talked to Patrick about this a while back, that kind of one of my uh, passions in life is to help people with personal finances. So if anybody ever wants to just chat about uh, finances, taxes, investment properties, whatever, for free, I do that. So just let me know. Great. What do you think about bringing these two back? Yeah. Here, right? Absolutely. So here's my ask. Let everyone know what today meant. Why was it important? Why were you here for an hour and a half? Right? What was valuable about what Bud and Mark has said and some of the questions that have happened? I mean, I'm sitting over here internalizing all this, and it's amazing. And the mindset piece was huge on both sides. So our goal, my goal with this is to have 50 plus of our agents in this room because I, I really do believe this is massively valuable. So um, I'm, that's my ask to you. 
Um, and with that, let's give these guys a huge round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a mic drop. So thank you all for being here, and I, I trust this is worth your time. Yes, thank so, you so much. Thank you. Awesome. 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 That really was. That was. I love it. That's. Any ahas? Do we have? Yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. Do we, we have like any? A, we got a couple minutes. I don't have to call my database. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> I break, <laughs> out of, I break out into highs every time I do, so of course not to here, but then I get over it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. What's another aha? Uh -huh? I, I really appreciate, I know that there are a lot of teams here that are doing really great business, and there are people that are paying for meetings, and there is a lot of people that are doing really great business, and there are people that are paying for meetings, and there is absolutely a time and place for that, but I just really appreciate the way that you guys have built your business, really relational. <laughs> Like, and I know Mark, you say, you know, but you, you have, I mean, you, you well, have these people coming back. Well, really what they've done is they've, you know, done a solo with Guide Mark here and, and they've done it intentionally. Yeah. You know, that's the difference. It's just, you just, you know, you have a plan and you execute it and you know that. And thank you for being open-minded and open. Absolutely. everything. Like, he's my shit. Absolutely. It's kind of part of the culture here. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I was telling Patrick before, like, you know, it's like, you know, I, I have a passion for helping new agents actually for so so if anybody you know wanted to shadow an open house or whatever you know because I've been there five years ago you know but I think this is part of the abundance of our culture is a lot of people would not be willing to share what Mark and I share it's like no you know and I'm closed off you know that you got to figure it out and, and I think both of us and I think the office in general is just filled with abundance in terms of you either have a scarcity mindset or an abundance mindset and Keller Williams, in, in my humble opinion, is filled with abundance mindset. Any other? Uh, I just want to ask one more question, if you don't mind. So you guys gave us all your numbers. Can you tell us how many transactions that was? Twenty-six. Sixteen. That has always been so really. You don't have to. You don't have to sell a lot of homes yeah. to make a decent living. Right. It just have to be expensive. Well, <laughs> and you gotta you gotta charge. You provide a lot of insight and a lot of value, and then the commission thing doesn't come up. I think sometimes for a new agent, it's really intimidating to hear all those numbers, and you don't realize, like, I, I only did three transactions this year, right? Which is not that many. But That's you, great. Yeah, that's what awesome. I mean. It's like if you talk about the number of transactions, I didn't do that bad actually. No. And there's, you know, you hear big numbers and you assume tens or dozens or whatever of transactions, and it's not really that big. So you it's don't nice need to, to sell a lot. Yeah. Really don't. Not to make a decent. It's just an eighty-five percent profit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, right. seriously. Yeah. And, and something to think about too, and, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately as I've continued just to try to. Work. Comparison is really the thief of joy. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? I mean, listen, I don't have this all figured out. He doesn't have it all figured out. But I just, I'm focused on what I can do and the amount I can donate. And I truly, you know, don't compare myself to other agents or sorry, just do my thing because I'm inevitably not going to sell as much as so and so or, or so and so. But you know what? I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about what lies ahead and, uh, and I'm going to try as best I can to not compare myself because I, I do believe it kind of robs choice sometimes. So, any other thoughts? Ladies? It was great. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for sharing. I've got a lot of wonderful ideas. Awesome. Okay. All right. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you would think, yeah, I thought I was doing until I talked to Val. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? 